Welcome back to TTC. The next time you see the Ratchet Gauntlet here on the channel will be Air Ratchets versus Cordless. I want to know what models you guys want to see, so leave those in the comments. But new always gets priority here, and the newest new from both the main players and Cordless Ratchets these days is these holy ratchets from both DeWalt and Milwaukee. So we're going to find out for you today where these models fall in their own lines, against each other, and against everything out there. We're going to do that by comparing DeWalt's new sealed head versus their existing still quite new 12 and 20 volt models and tool truck options, and the new Milwaukee Insider ratchet versus the M12 models it compares closest to. And of course, these two against each other on the gauntlet and on the dyno, where torque, not always the most important factor on a cordless ratchet, to be honest, but certainly helps cut through the marketing BS and good for some much needed points to place highly in our rankings. Plus, we want to see if we can break them by hand. This is DeWalt's latest DCF 510 that Casey Overland lent us over a month ago. Shout out to him. It's a part of a growing list of cordless ratchets, a group whose only qualifier being that it costs 250 bucks. It seems like until recently, 180 would have been a lot for a cordless ratchet, and now they're all $250 for some reason, but DeWalt's throwing you a bone here, and for that cash, you get two ratchets in one, a 3 8 and a half inch drive. Sort of like Makita does, theoretically, if you need both 3 8 and a half inch cordless ratchet or would find that useful, you could apply your calculator to this price point and find out if it's a better deal for you than buying maybe two models together. And this sealed head design with the forward reverse switch more accessible and easy to use reminds us a lot of Matco's latest sealed head 16 volt, and that's 360 bucks. You're also getting, like both new models today, quite an upgrade in the specs. The yellow brand's 12 volt extreme model is rated 250 RPM and 60 foot pounds of torque. Their 20 volt atomic is 250 RPM and 70 foot pounds of torque. And this new 510 is 300 RPM and 75 foot pounds of torque. Upping both the specs, usually you get one spec at the cost of torque, but somehow this is claiming to pull off both, a rare thing if true. But while speed sounds important, it's harder to measure than you might think. Sure, there's free speed, where this 300 RPM rated DeWalt spins at about 500 RPM by our numbers, but free speed also means quite little, as some tools just absolutely fall on their face once they experience any little bit of thread friction. Which is why we use the Gauntlet, a series of new every time nylon lock nuts, which represent some consistent resistance to unthreading, as well as a series of torque nuts to see which can slow down the tool or force you to use hand intervention. First up, we're going to see how this new 20 volt sealed head compares to their existing DCF 513 20 volt atomic. Interestingly, despite its lower RPM rating, the atomic pulls out ahead early on. These smaller threads have more threads per inch, and the Atomic just tackles that sort of stuff quicker. Once we get into this third set of fasteners here though, look at the 25 foot pound Titan nut. The sealed head completely closes the gap on this one and leapfrogs the Atomic a bit. And from there, the new Atomic just spins larger stuff a little bit faster and across a multiple minute test, that adds up finishing around half a minute in front of the Atomic. Good stuff, more comparisons on this one coming up but the gauntlet may particularly be suited to one tool, and that's this new M12-3050 Insider Ratchet that even as a bare tool comes with sockets as a set. Trey, a viewer of ours, got one before we did and wanted to see how it would do, and here it is, just not next to the DeWalt that was five to six weeks ago. And on paper, this thing is dope. I've seen a lot of debates about this online, everything from it's completely useless to it changes the entire game. But ever since I saw empty pass-through style hex-like air ratchets, I've had the unrealistic dream of owning like a 10-piece set of these things with each hex in the head being a different size, like a whole wrench set, which wouldn't even work that well in many things. But hey, dreams are dreams, right? This is the next closest thing, but yeah, around $300 for that luxury. Low profile sockets slide into it and act as pass through sockets, or at least on the first half of the set they do. The larger sizes are not pass through style. This along with its upgraded specs for us is where the main story here is. Sure, it's low profile. It does save on dimensions there, but I think people aren't really getting how little of a difference that can be. The DeWalt shaves head height down by being this sealed head flathead design. It's by no means as small as the Milwaukee M12 in any dimension really. It's sort of an accidental long reach design these things are. But that little shave down takes off about 0.2 inches with the same socket in each of the DeWalt tools. So that's some advantage. The new Insider using the included low profile sockets that snap into the tool itself. It's definitely low profile, but you can also buy 
for example, a $40 set of nano sockets and put that on the ratchet you already own, and this proves to be not a world of difference. On that, it comes down to a 3mm difference between the high speed ratchet and the insider with the included sockets. That's like 0.21 an eighth of an inch, less space savings than this DeWalt gained by just making a new model. And with your own socket set, you could go to larger sizes and without skipping sizes as well, or have additional SAE sizes that you already own that are not tool specific. So no, what we found to be sweet is the space savings you get by not having to run a deep socket on some situations. This ratchet can follow a hex nut all the way down the threads, at least up to 15 millimeters. Do wish that they were all passed through. And the hex size is also 14 millimeters here, which means you can't buy these sockets and put them in your 16 millimeter hex DeWalt or use other common existing sockets with an outside hex. They are proprietary. But in this application's case, using these sockets saves at least an inch, usually over an inch in most cases, in the initial space needed to fit the tool over the bolt and threads. Way easier to sneak the ratchet up and over the bolt each time with a design like this. One reason the Insider isn't even slimmer is that it's higher torque. 60 foot-pounds over their high-speed ratchets just 35, even their higher torque M12s are rated at 55. And 300 RPM, just 100 RPM down from the high-speed, and 100 RPM up on their regular models. Now we've long said there's no real Goldilocks cordless ratchet out there yet. The M12 high speed, we use that probably the most around here, but it gets hung up or just way slow down on stuff that you think it shouldn't be. So this could be the one. Here it is with the higher torque M12 up top that it compares closest to. And interestingly, yet again, same new nylon lock nuts from the same bags, the lower RPM M12 up top pulls out an advantage here early with the smaller stuff. Free speed ratings really don't mean all that much. And of course, we have the Insider using its pass-through sockets where it can, just in case there's some advantage there by not square drive adapting it. But the Insider does have 3 8 drive and also quarter inch and hex and square drive since it's focused on that smaller size range. So it's like two to three ratchets in one, you could say. Towards the middle of the run, the Insider slows down even more compared to its brother. Then it puts the foot down and catches up, eventually passing it on larger stuff making up a lot of that ground here, finishing just over 20 seconds ahead of the existing long reach high torque M12. So here it is, this is how the new DeWalt 510 does against the new M12 Insider. On the first few bolts, the DeWalt sneaks out a lead, but if you'll remember what we just were testing in the middle of the run, the Insider is even less speedy here on these sizes. And we have some reasons why, which we'll be showing you coming up, but here the sealed head opens up that gap even further it's the larger stuff that the M12 excels in across this range of thread sizes and nylon lock nut resistance. And yeah, it's not nearly enough to catch the DeWalt. The yellow tool finishing the gauntlet by the time the red tool just starts on these torqued half inch threads. A full 40 seconds the gap ends up being. The Milwaukee had better be an absolute torque monster to be able to make up for this type of deficit and take the overall W. But some of the reasons for this difference and why the Insider wasn't even more dominant over the original high torque M12 is because the Insider behaves sort of weird sometimes. Okay, so check this out. We're gonna start these two on the same bolt at the same time in real time. And you'll see here that the DeWalt completes this thing sooner, which makes sense based on what you've seen so far, but to the tune of about two and a half seconds on this bolt. Now watch both tools remove the next one. So check out this spinning 13 here, you'll see it spin and then sort of stall, then spin again, then stall out for a while, then start up again. We're going to call this the insider stutter as it causes the M12 to lose 11 seconds from the DeWalt just on this one bolt. And this is what that looks like when it happens. Watch the hex shape up top here. The stutter happens in forward or reverse, but more often in reverse we find. It sometimes slows down, sometimes just basically stalls completely and then picks back up. Now we did the gauntlet a couple more times with this thing and the test we showed is pretty indicative. Sometimes it even happens more often than our test showed. Trey hasn't owned this ratchet all that long and he even mentioned to us that he's noticing this sometimes happen as well. We haven't seen it do this much on larger stuff and that's one of the reasons it picks up steam at the end here. It's not stuttering. Another annoyance we found is the adapters. Their relief cut detent ring things aren't deep enough. The included sockets with the kit don't really come out as you don't really pull on them. But the square drive adapters pulling off sockets from the tool more often than not 
it comes out with the adapter. The DeWalt doesn't do this at all. Those are pretty hard to pop out. It's just sort of an annoying thing you don't want to really see on a $300 tool. The adapter also can only go in from one side. The sockets you can flip around and orient the handle and trigger where you want. I think that's pretty cool, but not the adapters. I think they do this to keep your attached sockets from interfering with the switch. A switch that really does move around a lot. Existing M12 switches are a bit annoying to work with as they're kind of flush mounted, but this one being an insider ratchet for those close quarters might be hard to keep this thing from hitting stuff and flicking the wrong way, especially on a design where it sort of acts that way to begin with, and sometimes you don't really know if that's happening by feel. But hey, I get it. You might be saying, okay, so you showed a 20 volt ratchet beating an M12. Big deal. Well, while the DeWalt beat the Atomic 20 volts, we contend, and the data points to the 12 volt extreme from DeWalt being even a bit better. But well matched in the sealed head ratchet's case, that 12 volt finishing just a few seconds ahead of the new model. But is lately like 110 to 130 bucks. We love that thing. This $250 ratchet has some torque to make in order to balance the scales. And so does the M12 for that matter, which did excel at larger stuff. All right, for a peak torque, the DeWalt can muster up about 80 foot pounds. That's with the half inch anvil. And with the 3 8 drive on a 3 8 socket, that's 79 foot pounds. Yeah, based on how these work, that sort of makes sense. When pushed up to our usual 150 foot pound target by hand, unlike the last episode or two where we saw casualties, the DeWalt gets there easily and it felt little flex on the body along the way. Good stuff. The M12 with a five amp hour high output, which we've been using so far in the gauntlet, gets up to almost 50, gets up to really 51 when convinced with a nudge, as these ratchets can sometimes successfully do. Much better than the 29 of the high speed ratchet we saw, but surprisingly less than the M12 high torque it's supposed to be beating in the specs by five foot pounds. Which is also weird because it did so well in turning the larger stuff at the end of our testing here, which just goes to show how not often useful peak torque is as a spec on these type of tools. This was also taken to a similar hand torque range without an issue. It's a stout tool and we're always happy to see that and it's nice not to have to grab a second tool to break things loose. All right, so we're finally here. Let's tally these things up and see how they did. Lower is better. The DeWalt is noticeably heavier even with the power stack battery and with the M12 using a five or six amp hour battery. 27 and 33 here. We're including the length advantage the M12 gets with the included sockets artificially here since it didn't have an anvil, but that means this score is only with the included sockets. 15 and 29 here, obviously this is very good. They both get pushed up into our 50 point max for value here, and then for their times it was 128 seconds and 168 seconds, which really this isn't bad at all, but on this side of the ranking at the top, yeah, you'd need high torque figures to make up for that type of speed ideally, which we didn't see. 51 foot pounds or 51 points shaved off of its score and 80 points shaved off here for 80 foot pounds. It's nearly a record just under the Cobalt 82. That totals with lower being best 209 and 160, putting the M12 down here close to where the 20 volt atomic is and a bit better than their regular higher torque Milwaukee 3.8s and the sealed head up to fourth overall. Funny enough, Trey, who sent us the Insider, owns basically all of these for some reason, and that new M12 now as well, and says that DeWalt and basically this one Ryobi do everything quickest overall. This Ryobi being a weird one, it really is a high speed ratchet, but the stutter step thing it does causes it to make like 30% more torque than it really should. But yeah, it also breaks when run by hand at 150 foot pounds, if that matters to you. Didn't expect it, but we learned quite a lot today. We saw these two to be probably very similar, but looking at how this thing does against a $360 Matco sealed head, if you want a fast ratchet, like not in spec, but in real life, that has a lot of torque, flat, narrowish head with more accessible selector switch, get the new DCF 510. You'll even get a half and 3 8 ratchet all in one. We recommend the power stack battery for this. You don't need a two in one in can accept the eighth inch thicker head. The 12 volt extreme, especially at these kind of prices is hard to ignore. Now for the new insider, it's an on paper tool. As you see it going up against the extended reach M12 high speed, the 2569 here, it does every single thing we want it to on paper. Gives up little RPM for a lot more torque over the high speed version. 
has a pass-through design, low profile, it's awesome. In practice, maybe we'll want to see a future Gen 2. This is a new design after all, but it didn't all come together. This is annoying and will slow you down. This is annoying and will slow you down. Not all of the sockets are pass-through. They have a proprietary design and hex size. And I'm not sure how much the DeWalt is made better by being a sealed head, but this one, after each gauntlet run, could stand to benefit from a similar sort of sealed design choice. Where the rubber met the road, it just didn't blow any of us away or have the torque to make up for it like some ratchets do. As it sits, the extended reach M12 high speed with some low profile sockets is just more ratchet, more versatility for less dollars total. That said, we like this concept, so here's hoping Milwaukee and other brands can work on it and perfect it. We make episodes like this at least every Friday. Click buttons below to make the algorithm happy, and thanks for watching.